This lesson is going to be demonstrating how you can use a Google Doc. So whatever content we've got within the Google Doc, I've just got some random content. I also got an image there. We can then see the output being rendered within the executable application, within the dev app. And then we can also create and use it, sending it out as an email. So generating the HTML version of the doc and then using that as our HTML email body. And then when we send that out, going over to our email address, we're going to get a new version of the updated document. So there's the Lawrence Svekas 55, and as well as the image included. So that's going to be covered in this lesson. Go ahead and create a brand new Google Doc that we're going to be using as our template that we're going to extract out the HTML from. And within the document, we'll just add in some content so that we have some content there that we can pull out. You can also change the sizes and this will be in line with the HTML output. And I'll just add in some text and then we can always update the document afterwards. So we're gonna be generating this and creating a standalone application with Google Apps Script. So go over to script.google.com, create a brand new project and this project is the one that we're going to use in order to connect to the doc and we're going to be using the ID. So this is going to be a doc export as HTML and this way we can use the HTML from the document sending it via emails also outputting it as a web app. Now we're ready to create our functions so go over to the doc that you want to use as the template within the web URL you can select the ID this is the unique ID that we can identify the document by within the function I'm going to call it rename this and I'm going to call it get content as we're going to be getting the content from the doc. I'm going to also use the doc ID as a global variable and I'll just call it doc ID so that we can reference that document and have it hard coded within our script. So now let's go ahead and we're going to try first in order to extract and get the document into a variable called doc. So within the doc value using the drive app service we get the file by ID and this is where we can use the document ID that we just collected. And then if we do throw an error, I'm going to add in the catch. And if there is an error there, then we can just handle the error within this function. So this is in case, for whatever reason, we're not able to access and connect to the document. This means that for whatever reason, that file was not found and that we weren't able to get a proper ID. And then we can just output that as the error message in if needed. So that can throw the error if needed. So now let's go ahead and we're going to get the document name so that way we can make sure that we are getting the proper document. So selecting the document name and we can use the doc object that we just got and then the get name method. Let's go ahead and run the get content. We have to accept permissions for this and then allow the Google Drive app service. And I'm going to set up the doc globally and we'll just set that as a blank variable. So we'll define doc and then here we can use doc and that way we can select the doc by its name. So that gives us the doc by name and then also within the logger log, let's go ahead and we're going to log out the doc name. So that wasn't initially working because we didn't have it within the same scope. So there we've got the temp, so we've selected the correct document. So what we want to do is we want to export the document as an HTML document and there is a default path that every document can use as long as you've got the ID you're able to use this path in order to export it as HTML. So the path would be that the Google Docs feeds download documents export and all we need is the ID and then we can export the format as HTML. So this is the path that you can use as long as you've got the ID and that's going to download the file as an HTML file. So what we want to do is we actually want to return that into an usable HTML object within our code. So let's set up the URL path for the document. And this can be a string value and we can use the dynamic ID in place. So in case we do change our ID, that's not going to affect the code. So you can break in and back into the string. So that gives us the URL path that we just saw. The result is that that creates a download of the document. So what we want to do is we want to do a URL fetch app 
in order to return back the contents of the web URL. So we need to set a few parameters in order to make an access request to it. And we need to set, we can set the method as a get request. So this is gonna allow us to make a request to that path where we've got the ID. And we need to also pass in some headers within the request. So the headers are within the headers object. And this is gonna be returning back the authorization. And the value for that is gonna be the bearer space plus the value of the script app and the token from the script act. And that's the get OAuth token. So that will allow you to access the document from the current script app token. So that allows you to use the permissions of the Google app script just as we saw that we can connect to the document, we can also get the good document content. And then the last parameter within the object is the mute exceptions. And that is a Boolean value, so we just set that to true. So that's our parameters. And now in order to return back the HTML value of the endpoint where we're connecting to it, we can use the URL fetch app using the fetch method requires the parameters of the URL and then the parameters that we just set up. And we want to return this as get text content method. And for now, we'll just output the HTML into the logger once we receive the HTML. So let's run that now. We need to review the permissions for the application in order to make the fetch request to the application. So there's the connect to external service. As long as we've accepted the permissions for that, that's gonna allow our script to make a connection and that's the HTML that's being returned back. So we are gonna clean up some of this HTML, uh, but for now, what we can do is we can output this directly within the web app just to make sure and we can see what it's gonna look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. And this was just our original temporary function where we were making the connection. So we're not actually gonna need any of this information. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just copy this out so we can clean up the get content code. So we don't need to access that. And all we need is the URL. We need to select the, select the parameters and that's gonna return back the HTML. And using that return back HTML, we can output that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return the HTML value. So when we have the get content function, when that runs, that's gonna return back the, the content as HTML. And then within the web app do get method, and this is the default one for web apps, so all of the content will come out from the web app. We need to return, and we're gonna use the HTML service, and from there we're gonna create HTML output, and that's gonna be coming from the get content function. So save that, and let's go ahead and we're gonna set up a new deployment. The deployment type is gonna be a web app and you can set up execute as and who has permissions to view it. And when you click the URL, so now you've got an HTML output of the content. So any content that you update here, and let's go ahead and we're gonna insert some images, let's insert an image from the web. So I'm gonna use the app script logo, just insert that image into our documents. And then uh, let's uh, refresh the content of the executable. So we see we're getting the HTML content and that's being, and the HTML content is being output into the web app page. So the HTML that's being returned, it's quite long. So when we do the get content, there's a lot of excess here. So what we wanna do is we want to strip out the head contents and we don't need any of this for the HTML. So you can strip this out because this is a lot of excess styling that you may or may not want. Uh, so in this case, I'll show you how you can strip it out. You can of course send the email with that HTML content as it's all valid HTML. So let's take the HTML instead of setting it as cont, I'm gonna use let so that we can make an update to it. And then using the HTML replace, that will allow us to replace some of the content that's contained within there. And we're gonna be looking for all of the content so using a regular expression where we're gonna be matching the content that is between the head and that's all content. So that's using the asterisk wildcard for all of the content and matching it to where the head, where the head 
tag ends. And then what we want to do is we just want to replace it with blank. So let's uh, try that. And that stripped out all of the head contents. And then uh, let's strip out all of the excess from the span, the body, and the HTML. So I've opened up the dev version. So this is the dev version content that's being extracted. So there's quite a bit of the excess coding that's been removed. You can also get rid of any of the IDs, styles, classes that are attributes within the tags. So we can do a replace like that. Uh, let's try that one more time. So now we've got a really stripped down version of the HTML. We have the H1 with a span, and then we've got uh, the, the name there, the second. So the HTML has been cleaned up quite a bit. And then of course, we've got the source for the image. Uh, so that's the HTML output. And now if we want to send this as an email, we can do that as well, because now we know that we can get it as HTML. So we can send the HTML as an email send my email, give the function a name so that when we run the function, and we can use the same thing where we get the content. So let's set up the parameters for the email. Uh, so first the email address that we want to use, that we want to send to. So using the session, and then get the active user, and then get the email address of the active user. So that will give us the current app script owner email so we need an email to send to, so that's a good email to use. Uh, there's also the subject that we're going to need for our email. And we can get this from the document name if we want. Uh, so that can just return back the document name. Uh, so let's use what we had before where we're connecting to the app and we're retrieving back a name for the email. And then the HTML body is going to be just the return back of the HTML. So we can give that a variable name of HTML body. And that's going to be using the exact same thing here where we were just getting the content to output. So we just need to have the HTML to get content. Now, if you are using the doc as an email template, you can always do the replace and replace any instances of whatever content you want to update within the context. Uh, and then finally, let's add in the mail app service. So we don't need the Gmail app because we're only sending an email. So that's the send email service that we're going to be making use of. And this requires the object value that we want to send. So we've got the email address that we're sending it to. We've got the subject that we're sending within the subject line. And then we've got the body, which you can just leave blank as well, because we've got the HTML body to it. And then attach the rest of the object to it. So we've got the HTML body. We've got a variable named HTML body that we're going to be attaching into that object. And then let's save that and select the send my email. We're going to have to accept permissions once again, because the app is now going to be accessing the email service. So we can send emails as this user account to the email. And it's still outputting that content, so send my email. And now when we go to the email, there we've got the email that was just sent. And this is the HTML email that's being output and generated. And this is all being done through the Google Apps Script. So once again, we make any updates to the Google file. And we go back to the script, send another email. So now this will send a new file with whatever HTML content we currently have within the Google Doc. And we're also still outputting it into the log there. So once you've done with the testing, you can also comment out the logging. So this is the way that you can get your Google Doc as an HTML object of code and strip it down a bit and then be able to use it within the mail service or within the web app as HTML output.